Coming up on Small Town Big Deal, Rodney discovers his favorite food in several versions. Squirrel a little. I don't have the shaking down very good. <laughs> and Jen keeps getting sidetracked. But I beat you. You beat me. As we begin our adventure down the most historic road in America. Welcome to Small Town Big Deal. I'm Rodney Miller. And I'm Jan Carl. It's been called the Main Street of America and also the Mother Road. <laughs> Stretched across eight states, three time zones, and represented adventure and freedom. We're talking Route 66. <laughs> and even though it was decommissioned decades ago, Americans and people from around the globe have great passion. I'd actually call it a love affair. <laughs> for this most famous of all American roads. For 59 years, it went from Chicago to Santa Monica, California, or vice versa. In its inception in 1926, Route 66 represented the transition from dirt roads to superhighway, but wasn't continuously paved until 1938. To understand why it's so beloved and why so many people continue to preserve parts of it, you have to get off today's modern interstate and spend some time on its pavement. So Rodney and I decided we should all take the iconic trip and start in the Windy City. There's a lot to see in the land of Lincoln. So you don't have to venture very far from downtown Chicago to find one of the most iconic landmarks along the route, Gemini Man. This giant guy has been thrilling travelers for decades and today holds special meaning for the family that now owns him and the historic launching pad restaurant. So tell us how this all happened. We both lost our spouses to cancer within the last five years. We met each other on a grief support group and he was taking me down on a date on Route 66. And we stopped by this place and I was just so taken by it. It was amazing. So a date, you decided to buy this place? Well, this building was dilapidated and shuttered and ready to fall down, yet there was a dozen cars in the parking lot and people were taking pictures. And I go, excuse me, sir, where are you from? He goes, Egypt. I go, what in God's tarnation are you doing in Wilmington, Illinois? And he goes, the Gemini giant. And I'm like, holy smokes, there's something to this giant thing. So Holly sees this building for sale. She said, let's save it. It had been shut down since 2012. The original family ran it for 49 years, very successfully. He originally put the giant out there in 65, just as a sign, hoping people would get out and take pictures. They'd smell hot dogs yeah. and food and come in. However, many years later, he's become iconic. The last year alone, people from 91 countries visited and signed their guest book. Hi, we're Paul and Peggy from the Netherlands. It's a bucket list trip for people all over the world. This is news to me that people in other countries, you know, across the yeah. ocean know about. They love Americana. And if they stop here, they will actually get to taste Americana, starting with launching pad milkshakes with a twist. What we put in this is a pound of ice cream. And I'm gonna slide around and throw a little bit of milk in here. Yeah. And then we have some pies here. Let's do blueberry. We cut it and we leave the crust there. This is a messy shake. Probably the bigger the mess, the better the taste. Always, always. And we're gonna spin around and put this on a blender. The crowning glory, the pie crust garnish. Oh my gosh, that's beautiful. They even went to a special Chicago hot dog making school. I think they got an A plus. So you know how much I love hot dogs. So Naya made me a Chicago style. Hey, I'm not leaving here without one of these. But I do hear there are some famous stars just up the road that we need to visit. The Polka Dot Drive-In was founded over 50 years ago and continues to be one of the most memorable attractions on Illinois' Route 66. Because of good food, fun, and a lot of famous friends. 
He ain't nothing but a hound dog. <laughs> hey, Jake. Hey, Elwood. We're on a mission. To see Route 66. You know what, Superman? I hope you can feel my pain, because there's nothing mild-mannered about Rodney Miller. Hey! I don't think it works that way. <laughs> With my superpowers intact, we headed down 66 toward Gardner, Illinois for more adventure. Maybe a little more than we bargained for. Jan was driving. So I'm not too worried that I'm going to get locked in for very long because I was in charge. The photo ops in history are endless. Next to the jail is another tribute, a 1932 diner. Next stop, Dwight, Illinois, and Ambler's service station. You can trust your car to the man who wears the star, the big, bright Texaco star. Again, more evidence of the global popularity of the Mother Road. So many people that come in are speaking a language other than English. They feel that Route 66 best typifies what the United States is. It's not New York, it's not Los Angeles, it's not Chicago, it's Route 66. It's a journey to make new memories or relive old ones. We would bring our tires into the local gas station. It was actually a Texaco station like this and he would fix our tires. And if it was a really good day, my dad would give me a nickel and I could get a soda pop. Stay tuned as we discover Route 66 has close ties with something else iconic. Just how long was Route 66? 2,448 miles, 3,520 miles, or 3,712 miles? The answer when we come back. You're watching Small Town Big Deal! <laughs> So how long was Route 66? If you guessed 2,448 miles, you're correct. Welcome back to Small Town Big Deal. We're in beautiful Illinois on Route 66. Or, or is it Route 66? Well, tomato, tomato, potato, potato. Yeah, I've, I've heard it both <laughs> ways. I think I've even said it both ways yeah, myself. Me too. Well, no matter how you say it, we are on to our next adventure. Rolling into Pontiac, Illinois, you first see the beautiful murals on and around the Route 66 Hall of Fame and Museum. Historic memorabilia abounds in the museum, but a true gem is the VW van inside and the modified school bus outside that were once the rolling homes of famous Route 66 artist Bob Waldmeyer. Bob's art included whimsical, detailed maps of the route, and the man himself ended up representing the passion and dreams that the road still inspires today. Also in Pontiac, an auto museum that features years of classic Pontiacs. When GM announced they were dropping the Pontiac, I kind of turned to my wife and said, so I guess it's up to us now. And of course, the name of the town being Pontiac, it was a natural. In the last 10 to 12 years, restoration projects along Route 66 have been completed. And so at this point in time, as in no other, people can travel Route 66 and see all these attractions in their as-new condition. It's a much welcomed comeback for Route 66. Hey, Jan, we should stop for gas. Yeah, but in the heyday of Route 66, you got a lot more than gas. True, and in normal Illinois, it's quite normal to eat and make new friends at the restored Sprague Super Service. If someone has never <laughs> traveled on Route 66, why would you encourage them to do so? Well, I'll tell you what I hear from the Europeans, and that is that they found the real America on Route 66. I'm, I'm sure they're right. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Next stop, Atlanta, Illinois, home of the Bunyan Giant, as in Paul Bunyan, holding my favorite food. Originally, the Bunyan Giant was designed to hold an ax, but hey, it's a lot cooler to hold a hot dog. And he stood along Route 66 as a landmark for over 40 years. Here's to you, Bunyan Giant. Atlanta's also a place for a little friendly competition. Who's driving you? That's you. That is you. I thought that was that, me. I thought I was me, one of them too, but those, that's you and that's me. This makes me very nervous. Oh, no. Oh, my gosh, I have zero points. You got zero points. <laughs> the song. Oh, yeah! I was so close. 
Hot stuff. Hot stuff. Hot stuff. <laughs> okay, I have to try it then. <laughs> what can I say? <laughs> hot, hot, hot. We checked out Atlanta's cool museum and found out where to see an even older piece of history. This right here is part of the original pavement of Route 4, which became Route 66. It's the first stretch of paved road between Chicago and St. Louis, right here in Atlanta, Illinois, about a 1.8 mile stretch. They don't make concrete like that anymore. Just a few miles west in Lincoln, Illinois, is the mill, now a museum and gift shop. When it was a restaurant, it attracted some colorful clientele. So we understand there were some pretty notorious people that traveled along Route 66. What can you tell us about them? Coonhound Johnny, which was Al Coonhound Al Johnny, that's... <laughs> he already sounds like a bad guy yeah. right yeah. now. He had big coonhounds, and he, they would protect the bootlegging alcohol. They also had gambling, and it is known that some people would take the gambling machines out to the railroad tracks and smash them to get the money out, and Coonhound Johnny and Al Capone were over those. So. Oh, so it wasn't good to cross them. No. Al Capone? It looks like Route 66 was an avenue for good, and not so good back in the day. The mill is keeping that history and some humor alive and well. So it's not every day you see a leg sticking through the ceiling. The strange and the quirky are part of the charm of Route 66, along with some classic photo ops. After all this slower paced road travel, I feel a little need for speed. The slot car variety, that is, at the Route 66 model raceway in the town of Elkhart. Oh. I win! Oh, yeah, baby! I'm falling in love with Route 66. When you pull up, you kind of do a little shaking. Don't dare move. There's more Route 66 mm -hmm. Illinois adventure ahead. Welcome back to Small Town Big Deal and our journey down the famous Route 66. We just rolled into Springfield, Illinois, the state capital at a place that's claimed to fame as being one of the originators of the corn dog. Time for Rodney to get cozy and make some for himself. Hey, ready to cook me some cozy dogs? Grab a couple of dogs, get them in the batter there, all, all the way, way down. down, so you cover the tops of the dogs there. When you pull up, you kind of do a little shaking. Now we can twirl a little and then stick them in. I'd say that's pretty good for a first timer. I don't have the shaking down very good. <laughs> then I just pulled them out and served them up. The first cozy dogs oh, I have ever cooked. Great, where are yours? <laughs> yeah. Cheers. This wow. is my dream job. What's it like to be that? It's amazing to be here and be a part of this history as it's continuing to evolve. I'm just very blessed. And I, I think the secret to that is that it's family. Beyond corndog fame, Buzz is brother to Bob Waldmeyer, whose whimsical Route 66 maps and artwork live on in tribute to both him and the Mother Road. He was a map maker and an artist. As he traveled through the Southwest that he loved, he discovered a lot of small towns along Route 66, and uh, he made friends, and he just uh, kind of adopted it as he wanted to preserve it. In many ways, I think he was like the unofficial ambassador. He kind of was. So Bob Waldmeyer's drawings and tips for Route 66 are in such high demand that here at the Cozy Dog Drive-In, well, they have them translated into Japanese, Chinese, French, uh, German, Dutch, Italian, you name it. Bob was also the inspiration for the character Fillmore in the movie Cars. Watch it to really understand Route 66 today. Not far from Springfield, in Carlinville, you'll find the only town where the route runs all the way around the town square. And the famous Brick Road segment in Auburn. 
Then, near Raymond, there's the Our Lady of the Highway Shrine. She's there for our safety. Mary, loving mother of Jesus, protect us on the highway. So it was erected, oh, by a youth council, huh. 1959. Safely driving on, we come to Litchfield. During Route 66 heyday, a great Saturday night here was movie night at the Skyview. And it still is. So for someone who has never been to a drive-in movie theater to watch a movie, how do you describe the experience? Most people nowadays are familiar with the so-called tailgate parties that you have at football games. Most of them will pull in backwards with, with the rear of the vehicle facing the screen. Okay. Open up the tailgate and we've had people drag out couches and <laughs> set them down. Beanbag chairs. Oh, you okay. name it. Because we didn't realize when we purchased it how big the Route 66 base and community and, and just the love and outpouring they would have for this. And of what we've seen between here in Chicago and the passion for Route 66, wow, I think you're onto something here. Next, we're on to Staunton to visit Henry's Rabbit Ranch. <laughs> and it's not just the furry kind. You had a fascination first for Volkswagen rabbits. Well, my dad got me started on that. My dad says, here, drive this little Volkswagen rabbit pickup truck. Well, by the time the day was over, I fell in love with it. And then he's collecting them, I'm collecting them. How many rabbits was that at that time? There was over 40. Wow. When did the real rabbits come in? My 20-year-old daughter at the time, Emily, got a bunny rabbit. She goes back two weeks later and gets a second bunny for companionship. Yeah, long story short, <laughs> 14 bunny rabbits. So that started the rabbit ranch. It really <clears throat> did. From cars and real bunnies. Yeah, all their hair brain ideas. Oh my gosh. Hubert? Hubert. That Hubert. was my father's name. Oh. It was the 66 bunny to come in. The 66th bunny? What do you love most about the people that come here? Their passion for traveling 66. So uh, exactly nine years ago, I went for my first trip to US. I was 21 years old and I thought like, oh, Route 66 is something that I'm gonna have to do in my life. I just bought tickets and I just wanna drive down to LA and yeah, let's see what happens. The passion for the highway has obviously transferred to the next generation. All right, sorry. keep a good eye on the shop here. We hope you've enjoyed this very nostalgic episode of Small Town Big Deal. It's the first in a series on Route 66, and they're coming up in future episodes. So, what was your favorite part of the Illinois portion? <sighs> you know, I think it was meeting so many people from so many different countries. I had no idea they had such an interest and a love for our Route 66. Yeah, that was really cool. How about you? You know, a couple of things. Gemini Giant was really cool. Love and then you. Cozy Dogs. Of course, a hot dog. <laughs> I should have known. I should have known. Well, I'll tell you what, we're only a few hundred feet from Missouri right now. We are. Mm -hmm. I'm Rodney Miller. And I'm Jan Carl. Join us again next week when once again we celebrate the great stories from across America. Let's go to the Show Me State. Let's go. <laughs> yeah. I'm guilty of consuming too many calories along Route 66. I won! So that makes me the so, champion. So, no, it doesn't. <laughs> yeah, it does! I beat you how many times in no, a row? No, that's only because I, I read mine. You had a faster car. I still had quicker time on the go, but you had a okay, faster car. Okay, all I know is, see, the flashing green light is on the right-hand side, and I'm standing to yeah, your right, so that means I win. The first side, it probably is kind of shocked that it was over there, because I beat you every time. You I only beat me because I cheated. The original menu, that's only 25 cents, and a shake, 30 cents. Can we go back to these times? <laughs> <laughs>